Good morning, friends. I'm Ben Hayes, pastor of First Baptist Church, Dadeville, Alabama, bringing to you our thought for the day today on this Monday morning, September 28th, and it is almost October. Can you believe that? But I want to apologize for the hit and miss uh, thoughts for the day last week, but I was in Robertsdale, Alabama, ministering to the disaster relief, uh, in, through the disaster relief folks down there. Uh, to the victims of Hurricane Sally, and uh, just keep praying for those folks down there. There are still crews working, and a lot of people who are still in need of, of help. Uh, and it's uh, it's going to be a long time uh, before they're back to, to normal. So pray for them, if you would. Uh, but today we're going to continue our journey through uh, the book of Proverbs. So if you have your Bibles, uh, take them out to uh, and look at Proverbs chapter 5. And remember what we've been talking about. King Solomon is uh, taking the role of a father, giving advice to his son, wisdom to his son. And that's what he, he wants to do. And over the next few chapters, that's what we're going to see. It's just different spe uh, specific areas that he's going to, to touch on. And I think it's interesting that when he starts talking about these specific areas, the first one he deals with is sexual immorality. Because here's the thing. One of the leading problems in the world today among believers is sexual immorality. There's a report out uh, just recently that talks about the uh, mindset of believers in the 21st century towards this particular sin, and uh, they basically decided that uh, anything goes, uh, which is sad because the Word of God is very specific about uh, our need to remain sexually pure, that the sexual relationship is between uh, one man and one woman for a lifetime uh, after they are married. And so this is some very wise advice, uh, specifically, that Solomon gives. And what he says is, if you look at the very first part of that, he says, My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Lend your ear to my understanding, that you may preserve discretion and your lips may keep knowledge. You know, how many times have we said to our, our children, I, I just wish you'd listen to me. Listen to me. If you'd listened to me, you wouldn't have had this problem. If you'd listened to me, you wouldn't have gotten into this situation. Of course, we all know that uh, in our younger years, we think we know everything, and uh, we often uh, ignore the advice of our parents. But this is good advice. Look at what he says. For the lips of an immoral woman drip honey, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lay hold of hell. Lest you ponder her path of life. Her ways are unstable. You do not know them. So what he's saying is you um, find yourself in a fatal attraction situation where you get involved with a woman and uh, that is not your wife and suddenly you find yourself uh, looking at the sharp end of a sword. You find yourself in situations that you never intended to be in. And he goes on through this uh, chapter talking about the, the potential problems that you're going to face if you ignore this advice. And this advice is good for men or women because the Bible makes it clear that as God's children, we are supposed to be sexually pure because we're to be holy as God is holy. And uh, one of the problems that we have in our world today is that we don't think about the, the true meaning of holiness. It's not just about being set apart as Christians. It's about living a life of obedience to the Father. And we're living in a world that is full of lost people who are looking at the church today and they're saying they're not living any differently than we are. So what's the purpose of joining them? What's the purpose of finding ourselves in, uh, in a church when we don't uh, get any benefit from that? But this is what Solomon says. He says, Therefore hear me now, my children, and do not depart from the words of my mouth. Remove your way far from her, and do not go near the door of her house. Let you give your honor to others and your years to the cruel one. And here's what he's saying. Uh, people are going to notice. They're going to see. And your reputation is going to be harmed. And because of that, your life is going to be changed for the, the rest of your days. And it's going to be a very difficult uh, situation that you find yourself in. Not only because of the, the things that, the, that people around you might think, but because of what God sees and what God has to say about this. And then verse 11, he says, And you, you mourn at last when your flesh and your body are consumed. 
And he's talking about the, the kinds of diseases that come with this type of behavior because it was prevalent in the days of King Solomon. And, and you say, how I have hated instruction and my heart despised correction. I have not obeyed the voice of my teachers nor inclined my ear to those who instructed me. And you find yourself thinking, I should have listened. Should have listened to dad. Should have listened to mom. Should have listened to the word of God. And things would have been a whole lot better. But let me finish this up by skipping down to the end of the chapter. Listen to what he says in verse 21. For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he ponders all his paths. His own iniquities entrap the wicked man, and he is caught in the cords of his sin. He shall die for lack of instruction, and in the greatness of his folly he shall go astray. And this is true for all sin, not just the sin of sexual immorality. We find ourselves traveling down the path of life and we stumble into sin. And, and as I said the other day, there's pleasure in sin for a season. The Bible tells us that. But what we do is we have a choice at that moment. Do we continue to wallow in the muck and mire of our sin? Or do we listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit as he reaches down to lift us up out of our sin and put us back on the path and cleanse us through our uh, confession and repentance and we find forgiveness and we go back to that journey? Or do we find ourselves trapped in these sinful behaviors, these sinful attitudes? Because here's the thing, God sees it and he knows it. And he says at the end, he shall die for lack of instruction. Listen to me. It is so very important that we heed the voice of the Holy Spirit as we follow the path that God has for us today. I don't know what your situation is. I don't know what you're going to face today. The temptations are going to come. Temptations to get angry. Temptations to hold grudges. Temptations to, to, to say something you shouldn't say. Temptations to gossip. Whatever it might be. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and walk in the path of righteousness because that is where you find joy. And that's the wisdom of the ages. God bless. I hope you have a great day today. And I'll see you again tomorrow.